I'm joined here by none other than Andrew Ramroop, who is a world-renowned designer. I'm also joined here by um, Brian Green, who is an actor, a singer, a performer of all sorts, a filmmaker. Um, a filmmaker as well. And I'm also here with Anthony De Silva of Look Optical Trinidad. And we're going to have an interesting conversation because it's all about bespoke fashion meets bespoke eyewear. Good morning, gentlemen. And Good, morning. Welcome. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, first of all, thank you very much for addressing me in this very dapper suit, you know, um, Probably one of the nice, nicest things I've worn in my life. <laughs> my pleasure. I enjoy it. Enjoy so, it while it lasts. Yes, yes, yes. Most definitely. So for the, the time we're here. All right. So <clears throat> Andrew Ramroop, your name is synonymous with bespoke fashion, um, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but also in the United Kingdom. Now, this is not an easy thing to have gone from what would be considered mainstream to bespoke. Why would you have gone into bespoke fashion? I have, I've always been interested in, uh, I came from Tunapuna. I came, I was born up in the hills of that northern range of mountains. And there, you know, my interest really was to make shirts initially. And when I was about 11, 12 years old, I tried to leave school. My father wouldn't let me uh, leave school. At 11 or 12? At 11 or 12, yes. My mother reminded me I was about nine years old when I cut up her pillowcase in the shape of a pair of trousers. Right. And uh, being in the hills, we had no uh, electricity. So we used one of those hand sewing machines. And I sewed down the side and inside leg and I created my first pair of trousers. I was nine years At old. Nine years old. That's right. So from the very early beginnings, I really wanted to become a tailor, but particularly in making shirts and, and making pants. And of course, when I was 11, I tried very hard to to fail my common entrance exam so I wouldn't have <laughs> to go to college. <laughs> and I was successful in failing. Uh, so then I didn't go to, on to college and I sought an apprenticeship. And from that early age, wow. from that very embryonic stage, I started to make shirts and make pants. And your great success, success today is because you found what you have a passion for and you followed it through all the way. That's interesting is that I found at a very, very early stage what I wanted to do for a career. Right. So instead of going on to college and then on to university, and then probably studying and more academic uh, attainment, looking for that career or that life career, probably getting a government job and saying right. fit for life. At that very young age, I developed a skill. And when I was 15 years old, I was making suits. On Frederick Street, By on Port of Spain, 15. I was making suits. <laughs> and so I saved all my money. I had heard of Savile Road, the pinnacle of sartorial excellence. Right. That's where I wanted to be. R rather like an athlete wanting to be in the Olympics. I wanted right. to be on Savile Row. So I saved from 15 to 17 and a half years old. Didn't know anyone there. I bought a, a return boat ticket and I sailed to Savile Row. Hadn't done geography in school, right. having left at such a young age. I didn't yeah. actually know I was going to England or Europe. Right. I've got to say, I was going to Savile Row, so I was kind of, you know, focused on right, that. on that, specifically that. Absolutely. <laughs> I could only I imagine. To cut, it, to cut a really, really long story short, when I got to, there, to, to London, I had made myself two suits. I used those suits as examples of my skills, and I got a job immediately. Wow. But being on Savile Row, Trinidad style and so on, I wanted to, to learn Savile Row style. So then I left uh, where I was working at Huntsman. Huntsman is that... Uh, place that the movie was uh, Kingsman was based right, on. Yes. I left Huntsman's and then went on to London College of Fashion and did my degree in art and design and tailoring and business studies. Wow. So like, for, so for those who didn't know who Andrew Amrub was, now you know, and you definitely need to, um, to go do some research into him as well. Now, you are, we are pairing bespoke fashion with bespoke eyewear. I want to bring Anthony De Silva into the conversation a little bit because um, for the first time in my life, I'm wearing glasses. These are not tested, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> because I don't need glasses. But um, they are a very fashionable piece. So why go from you know, the basic and functional role of, of glass, of eyewear, versus um, what is a little more um, custom and what is there's more intricacy behind? Well, bes bespoke eyewear is, is everybody wants something unique. Um, I came out of the garment industry as well, and now being in the optical industry, Lindbergh is a line that we carry. We're the only dealer in the Southern Caribbean, and this is custom-built eyewear. There are six million combinations wow. of what we can build for you, and the materials range from gold to diamonds to um, titanium. You're wearing yeah, as you titanium. Say, you know, yep. grade titanium. titanium. <laughs> that's right, and so is Brian. Brian is right. also wearing a pair as well. And um, yeah, the world is your oyster. You have up to 27 characters. We can engrave your name on it for you, and we're finished building it for you. 
I could only imagine, you know, and, and I, I have, uh, Brennan and I both were in the culmination of, you know, bespoke fashion and bespoke eyewear. And um, of course, I would like um, Sir Andrew Ramroop to just give a little description of what we're both wearing at this point well, in time. What I have done, I've taken the gentleman's suit and personally designed it in a way that makes it distinctive, interesting, uh, perhaps more stylish than fashionable, because fashion, I think, is a moving target. And fashion, you can always be following fashion. So what I've done is taken the suit and made subtle differences. For instance, if you look at every other suit a gentleman is wearing, you'll find the angle of the pocket is actually going the opposite direction. Ours are in harmony with the shoulder line. And this is called our curve signature style. So here, instead of the pocket, for instance, being parallel, you've got a straight pocket with an angled flap. And here you've got an angled pocket with a straight flap. So this is a curve design and it mirrors the image of the curve at the front. And this is in a 24 karat gold stripe. So this is real gold. This is actual gold, the pin stripe is. Yes. Wow. So in bespoke, you can get almost every anything that you want. You know, you've got millions of designs in eyewear. You so certainly have millions of designs in, in gold. In, in fashion and design. as well. I mean, you what you're wearing is actually the delta line design. So it's much sharper lines. So what we've got is similar idea of the shoulder line and the pockets marrying each other. So what we try to do is create the optical illusion of shape. Right. But we don't have to create optical illusions with both you and Brian because <laughs> you've got small waists. But here, the, we've got that, that line, that delta shape at the pocket details, and we've got a delta shape that actually mirrors that at the bottom of the jacket. And this V here also mirrors that V. So that delta line follows all the way through. So that's what we call our delta line. This is the curve design signature style. And we also have the diamond delta, which, which we're not featuring here now, but uh, we've got lots of individual men's design. We want our men to dress in suits rather right. than just wear a suit because they have to. And um, so your your fashion and your designs, is it available for purchase for people inside Trinidad and Tobago or will they have to order it in? It has to, we're bespoke, we're ultra bespoke. So it's individually designed, hand cut and hand tailored for an individual. Wow. There is no line that we do with it you can buy. In fact, you don't buy a suit, buy one of my suits. You commission a sartorial image. Okay. So it's a conversation, we get to know your lifestyle, your career, we communicate with you. And all of that communication is really, we're designing in our minds. We don't actually even show you any fashion books. Right. So we don't want to use influences of anything else that we've done. We want it to be yours from the very start. It's only your body has been into this clothes. Right. It's not that you've tried it on into a store. Right, right, right. That is, that is amazing. And I would like um, Anthony to speak on the eyewear for us that we're uh, modeling this morning. Okay, so. <laughs> You're, you're wearing an hour frame and um, you're wearing a strip titanium. So again, modern cutting edge shapes, customizable, the arms are customizable. For example, I, I seem like I'm wearing a frame, but I'm not. It's actually the lenses are grooved at the edge and hand painted to match the arms. And the frames I'm wearing start at 1.9 grams and it's available exclusively at Look Opticians in Trinidad and Tobago. That is fantastic. Yes, sir. You know, so, uh, you know, as um, Rishi was saying that we have the whole meal here because Brian's first time. It's on Brian's first time, <laughs> it's on Brian's first time here. And um, yeah. he was described by Lisa as a snack. And then he has to say, um, correction, um, this, is a, this is a full meal. <laughs> and, you know, I feel honored to be standing next to these gentlemen 